Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm delighted to be joined by West Ham Fan TV presenter Dan Lawless. Dan's been on this show as well. Uh, previously, we spoke about Declan Royce, but we won't get into that. But uh, can you just tell us your, your background with Ireland? Uh, and we'll, we'll then get on to the main man, Darren Randolph. Yeah, so a lot of my family, they're from um, Ringsend in Dublin. I go over there quite a, a few times when I can for family functions, um, you know, all, all through my granddad's side of the family. So I was there for a wedding recently. So, um, yeah, like like I said, that's that's how I found out about your channel, because obviously being over here, it's good to have the updates for what's going on with Irish football and things like that. And like I said, I don't, I don't have time to follow international football, whether it's England or Ireland. I'm not a big international guy. When the big tournaments come up, that's when I'm really into it. But having a, a channel where it gives you up to keeps you up to date, that's 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 how I found you guys. All right, Delhi. Um, you know, just just in regards, obviously, Darren Randolph has a sign of back at West Ham. I know you you were a big fan of him even when he left. I remember you talking about him previously, and and you were still a big fan of his. And I think. Even though there was times where um, I think he fell out of favour, I suppose, with management, I think the fans still backed him. What, what was your kind of thoughts on him leaving, I suppose, originally? Yeah, I, w I was really sad to see him go at the time, but I understood his reasons for, for leaving because he wanted regular first-team football. And it was the thing is, it was, it was him and uh, Adrian we had at the same time, and it was sort of, they was interchangeable. It was one minute... Randolph would be our first choice and Adrian would be second choice. Then Adrian would be first choice and Randolph would be second choice. So he wanted that. He was getting to the point now where he got, he became Ireland's number one. He was really progressing well with his career. So he, he wanted to be number one um, in league football. So I understood, I understood his reasons for leaving, but yeah, I was, I was sad to see him go because I, I did like him a lot. Um, I, I really rated him. Yeah. It's funny that, Joe Hart came in originally, wasn't it? And then they kind of fell down the pecking order. I know well, that his, career's it, yeah. kinda, his career has kind of gone one way and Darren's gone the other. I know he's been in the championship, but on an international level, from an Irish point of view, his performances have, have been sensational. And arguably in the last two years, he's probably been our best player. Yeah, and you can never forget that, you know, he's one of the few keepers to get an assist. You know, he, he ended up getting that assist for Ireland, and um, which which was great to see. But yeah, like you said, obviously Joe Hart came in, and I would have rather just kept Randolph because Joe Hart he had an awful time at West Ham. Um, but again, it was a case of like Randolph, he went to Middlesbrough to to, to play more often, and now he's back. <laughs> well, like his even at, actually at Middlesbrough, he was um, he was a fan's favorite as well, and he got Player of the Year. For them last season as well and if you speak to any Middlesbrough fan I'd say they're absolutely gutted right now but the big thing and the big I suppose talking point that everybody's saying it and I would like to get your thoughts on it especially being a West Ham fan at the games every week is that Fabianski and himself will, will obviously be in regular competition for, for the number one shirt I'd imagine um, and you've had disappointing keepers this season I suppose to, to say the least uh, I've seen you on Twitter not being happy about goalkeeping situation. So to have Darren even in there now, what are your thoughts? Can he get in there ahead of Lucas Fabianski or will he be back up? Because I think that's a lot of people's fear from an Irish point of view is coming up to the massive games in the playoff. Hopefully it's games and not a game. Um, we'd obviously need Darren playing first team football because while he's been playing first team football, he's been our best player, as I mentioned. Well... <sighs> Fabianski is currently injured. We brought, we rushed him back, and he got injured again. So while Fabianski is injured, um, yeah, he'll probably absolutely be our number one. However, I think when Fabianski's back, it's just Fabianski is is a is a is a step above because when we had Randolph before, and like I said, when it was him and Adrian, like I, I always saw them two as on on a par, like they were both on that same level to me. And then you saw how well Adrian did when he went to Liverpool. So. The fact that you know I rate him on the same level as Adrian, he can definitely do a job. However, Fabianski's just been unreal. Like the amount of saves that he's got in the you know in the few games that he played when he hasn't been injured, it's just up there with um, you know the best keepers in the league. So it'll be very hard when Fabianski's fit to start. But I mean, obviously you've got the cup games for as long as West Ham can manage to stay in them. Um, but it's. I think this is the best time for him to get a lot of game time because we clearly rushed Fabianski back far too soon and re-aggravated his injury. So if we can have a keeper like Randolph and we can be confident in, 
then we won't have to worry about rushing back Rand uh, Fabianski again. So that's 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 something there to say that you know at least this season he's definitely going to get game time. Yeah. Do you think uh, if he comes in and he's playing like he is like international football is the cream of the crop because it's the best players of all countries playing against the best of all the other countries and he's performed magnificently I suppose he's gotten better with age in my opinion I think he's much better now than he was the keeper that he was at West Ham and I'd just be wondering if you know Fabianski's going to be out for a while if that if Darren plays that well do you think he could maybe keep the number one shirt yeah I mean I'm always of the philosophy that unless if you don't do anything wrong then you can't be dropped you know even we had David Martin obviously made that terrible mistake um the other day against Sheffield United when he done that short pass but before that and um, before he got injured, he was playing really well. And I was saying we can't drop him, even if Fabianski comes back, because he hasn't done anything wrong. So the same way, if 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 Randolph, you know, keeps performing, just because uh, I don't think you slot Fabianski straight in if you don't need to. So yeah, I think it's definitely an opportunity, and this is this is it's a golden opportunity for him to really perform and and hold on to that um, first team spot. So it's fingers crossed he can do that, but. I'm I'm worried because I'm hearing that he's got the same injury as Fabianski. This is what's really concerned me about this transfer is we've got three keepers now all with the same injury issue. So I'm excited to have him back, but I don't get why we've done it. If we if he's injured, do you think maybe it's a, it's a case of they they seen he's gone for that price? He's an international standard goalkeeper. And he knows the club. He obviously loves the club and, and he had no hesitation in going back. I know they had the issues with the medical and stuff like that. Were you kind of worried that that was going to hinder the move? Well, yeah, I mean, it, but it also summed up the situa- because, situation because I think some of, some people were saying it was like one of the longest medicals. I don't know if that was just hyperbole, but one of the longest medicals in Premier League history. But it was a really long medical. I mean, it, we, we started the attempt to sign him like, you know, almost two weeks ago, I think it was. You know, we're halfway through the window, so we've just got him. So there's there's definitely got to be a problem there. And and like I said, I, I think it's look like you, you, having him for the price we got him. And obviously we paid four million, but I think they still owed us money from when we sold him to them. So I think that's come off. So, yeah, it's to get us a keeper on the level of Randolph. It's good money, but we need a keeper that can play now because yeah. Randolph is injured. David Martin he's done a decent job, but he's shown that he's capable of like ridiculous errors like Roberto. And I think he's as bad as Roberto, but we really need a Premier League level keeper. And if he's injured, we're just back to square one and we're having to play. We might end up having to play Roberto again because I know we, I think we rushed David Martin back and he's not fully fit. So I, I have to see if, if, if Randolph is going to be fit for Everton. If I see him against Everton, and, you know, OK, it was just a few little things I needed to iron out. But again, he might play for Everton and we might have rushed him back from injury. So it's just it adds up the circus that is West Ham. You know? Yeah, well, the, the thing like he actually had a an unbelievable record in terms of games played with Middlesbrough and obviously Ireland when uh, when there wasn't friendlies, he would, he would play every competitive game. Um, there was obviously the worry. He, he's had an injury. I think in the last kind of two months, because he was very, I remember actually talking to him at the training ground when uh, we were playing one of the international games. And I was like, all right, good luck uh, going out there. Um, don't get injured. And he was like, Jesus, don't jinx me. So here I am the jinx now. But uh-huh. um, in fairness, the injury happened about two weeks after that. So it wasn't. Ah, that okay. Time. But yeah, I, got, I, I remember. I remember saying to him, I said, I feel bad. I, I sent him a message. I, I said, I actually feel bad now. I feel like I'm the one that cursed you for being injured. But he did have a really, really uh, good record in terms of playing games and not missing any games, especially with Middlesbrough. I I wouldn't say a, I, I was thinking it might have been 100 games, but I could be I could be way off. But there was a, certainly a, a, a lot of games that he played straight mm. without any injury. And that's why I was so surprised when it came out with the medical that there was some sort of recurrent thing or there was something there that they were worried about, you know? Well, if it is the same injury as Fabianski, because Fabianski was the same situation, you know, last season, he, he since we signed him, he played a lot of games for us, you know, and, and then got injured. Um, and then he ended up, you know, taking a goal kick and pulling, I think, his hamstring or something. Um, and then he was out. And then we had David Martin came in and a few weeks later, the same exact injury. 
And I'm hearing that's what Randolph's got. So I don't think it's sort of a testament to his, his overall fitness, but it's just one of them really unlucky injuries that West Ham now have got three keepers who, who have that situation. Because I think because I was looking that he hasn't actually recently featured for Middlesbrough. And I think it was down to that injury. So he ain't played for them. I was looking back like a few games up until before, December and all of that. So it's um yeah it is a worry i'm i'm hoping the fact that he ended up ultimately passing is a good sign but you never know west ham doing dodgy dealings to get things over the line you can't put it past them allegedly or whatever in case they sue me i don't know, throw that in there well i won't sue you anyway but um the uh the thing about randolph and i think the last couple of games is i think they, they had been flirting with, with um west ham i think his representatives have been flirting with west ham a little bit just before the january window opened as well i think there was a, there was talks got ongoing anyway i think it was in the public eye anyway and um, that might have been the, been the case where they were like okay we're gonna have to maybe look at maybe moving you on i don't know the whole ins and outs, but uh, I thought he was back from injury because he came back for the international break, then came back, and then he was mm-hmm. he wasn't seen, you know. Yeah, it's it's a weird one. It is a strange one. As like it's it's we're just we're gonna know more over the next coming days. Like so, when it starts to get to, I mean, if if we get to the Everton game and he's not in the squad, you know, you can start to wonder then at that point. Okay, is he still injured? Have we signed an injured goalkeeper? Would we need one immediately? Because Fabianski would definitely be out. Um, so if we've got David Martin and Roberto in the squad, you know, um, I mean, like I said, as uh, you know, apart from that, that little thing that, you know, that that annoying little injury thing, I'm really happy to have him back. Um, and the players are, are really happy to have him back. He was really popular. I see um, Mikel Antonio posted uh, how happy he was to have him back. So, yeah, he's another great person to have in the dressing room. Um, I'm just hoping that our needs can be can be met immediately. But I don't I, I I wish we'd never let him go, to be honest. I mean I still have that memory of um France versus Ireland when um France beat Ireland and you see Randolph crying and Pyatt's going up to him and he's hugging him and those those were the days. Take you back to those days. We still had Pyatt, it he, he was killing it in the in the Euros. We had Randolph killing it in the Euros and uh now nah, look where we are. I think that was the start of his, his real rise, I suppose, after the game that, which you spoke about earlier with the assist. Um, but hopefully hopefully he's getting people in the walls of Jericho in training now over the next couple of days again. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah I, re- yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Was it not Mikel Antonio he had in the walls of Jericho? I think it was. I think it was Antonio as well. Yeah, they've, I mean, they've, they're really close to them too, so they've got a really good relationship. So stuff like that is when you have people on there you really vibe with, it's really good for the morale. And with the things that are going off, on with our club and, and just the aura that surrounds the club, it's, it's good for that, um, I suppose, to, to have someone in there that can can give a lift to the dressing room. So, yeah, he's someone that's always always fitting well with the team. So, yeah, I mean, it's just fingers crossed he's bloody fit. That's my only concern. But it's two weeks in and we've only signed a, stri- a goalkeeper. That's all we've signed when we need a striker, a midfielder and a right back. It's uh, yeah, it's worrying times. I mean, hopefully he can he can play up front as well. <laughs> if he can't, yeah, well, he looks a, he looks a little bit like David McGoldrick, so he might be able to. I mean, yeah, we would bloody need him to like if, if Fabianski is back. That is a way as well. We can get first team football. We'll put him up there with Alaire, and he can uh, you know get some knockdowns for him. He just needs to grow his beard back, and he's he's David McGoldrick point two. Um, just to, just to make it regards like. I think, in fairness, West Ham, once you had the kind of goalkeeping situation, it's when you kind of plummeted down the league, wasn't it? So if Darren could come in and be fit and, and start performing, there's no reason why he can't climb up, back up that league. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I think that's 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 been our biggest issue because when we had Roberto, we dropped a ridiculous amount of points. We really did. We were just in free fall because of the goalkeeper situation. So, like I said, if you can have someone that we're confident in, um, you know, then happy days, like I said, and and I was always happy and proud to have um, an Irish international as West Ham in the team. Um, I think we've we've got um, a couple now. Yeah, you got Connor Commentary, uh, Josh yeah. Bullard, who I really, really highly rated uh, at international level. I'm sure you really rated them. I was actually going to ask yeah. you about them. Yeah, I mean, they're highly rated among the fans, and and Josh Cullen is the one everyone's sort of hoping can replace Mark Noble. 
you know, and, and, and fingers crossed on that. Like, and and I'm, I think him getting into that Ireland side is brilliant for him because they said he's playing against, he's been playing against some of the best players in the world. Um, people from all different countries, different different playing styles. So it's really good for him. Obviously, we've been in a situation where we've been sending him on loan, but I want to start to um, to really bring those guys through. But uh, yeah, I'm supposed you guys will be a bit nervous now on West Ham um, dual nationality players. I was sad about that. Now we have uh, <laughs> we have him, Connor Coventry, um, uh, uh, two at West Ham anyway. But they they seem to to love. Playing for Ireland, mind you, the same was said about someone else who plays for West Ham, but we won't go into that. Or yeah, or I, I, yeah, I, I think I think with every, the way everything that happened, I don't think that's something that you'll see very often anyway. Um, I can see them, you know, slotting in and and really taking their chance with Ireland and and staying with Ireland anyway if that situation comes up. But there, I think there with with that, I know we don't want to go too much, but I think it was just like it was so much so soon with the rise. Whereas Josh Cullen and Conor Coventry, I think they're going to have a much more like slower development, a more um, steady kind of rise. Uh, yeah, exa- exactly, a more steady rise. So you'll see that. Um, and I just think, yeah, that's probably a, a great that's a great thing for us when that the fact that they're playing for Ireland is, you know, they need as much game time as possible. And hopefully, if we can stabilize, we can start to bring, um, you know, either either one or both into the first team. You know, and then imagine that you have Randolph playing Josh Cullen and Connor Coventry. You might need to change your allegiances from uh, Everton to West Ham there. <laughs> yeah, you also have uh, Anthony Scully as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and the uh, okay. yeah, he's a very. I mean, that's that's one as well. That's um, a little bit further down the line in terms of development. You know, so we we've got yeah, quite a few there, which is great. Which is it, it's great for um, you know the Irish football because I think that was a problem with the youth coming through that we yeah. wasn't really seeing that and if we can start to see the some of the more younger players getting developed in in different teams in you know one of the most competitive leagues in the world you're seeing these players come through i think that's you know the best thing um so yeah fingers crossed these 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 players turn into real gems and uh the next world cup you know could have a little run on the go yeah, well, even even at that, if anything happens to James McCarthy or Glenn Wheeler between now and the playoffs, Josh Cullen will be next in line to be that defensive midfielder as well. You know, if he's back playing with Charlton, I was out injured. I mean. Yeah, that was the, that was that's that was the gutting thing that he that he did get injured because he was getting some plays. I mean, they they absolutely love him down there. He, they were really they were really happy to um to get him back. So, yeah, that 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 tells you everything, you know. So I think that's the ch- the championship. I think is the place to go if you want to put a player in the championship. It's a great development place. Um, and like you said, if if Randolph, I know he's not that development age, but he has gone down there, and it's a tough league. So hopefully we've got, like you said, got a better goalkeeper back than we let go. So and goalkeepers, they're like they're like wine in it. They get better with age. So. You know, it's, well, it's, it's not all. Look at your heart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Geez. Yeah. No, he's like cheese. He's honestly, <laughs> it's, it's worse with me. So, yeah. No, fingers crossed, mate. We'll, we'll see. Like I said, we'll see when we play um, Everton on Saturday. I hope he's in the side and hopefully he has a, he has a great game. You know, and then I think that will really set things up nicely. And I think that will bring a bit of positivity to say that, okay, this has been a good signing. Yeah. Well, uh, that, I, I think we'll we'll leave it at that. that. That's been great. Thanks very much for coming on the show. Anyone of our subscribers uh, who haven't checked out West Ham Fan TV, please do do great work. Uh, Dan and Nikki and all the boys uh, work extremely hard uh, and produce lots and lots of content. Uh, make sure you go check them out. Subscribe to their channel as well. Uh, don't forget to like this video. And if you're new to our channel, don't forget to subscribe. So a huge thanks to Dan for coming on. And if you want to give us your thoughts on the whole Randall Fabianski situation that's now in the comments, or if you want to talk about any of the future Irish internationals uh, at West Ham uh, as well, drop in the comments. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll speak to you soon.